pictures, look at the names we have to call mm. them. Uh, sadly, most people don't do Latin today. Australopithecus, Austral as in Australia, meaning southern, mm. Pithecus as in eight. So we call Lucy, the one that's supposed to be the missing link, we mm. call her the southern ape because that's mm. what she is. Mm -hmm. She's not a half ape or a half man, she's a southern ape. And when it all boils down to it, if you have enough evidence of any fossil, you either lump it on one side of the line and call it an ape-like creature, or you lump it on the other and you call it a dead person. All and right. there's tens of thousands of fossil people and they're no help to evolution. All right. Uh, it if I, I uh, got this correctly, John, that uh, that the idea of um, of slavery may have come from evolutionary theory. Um, that's a popular line in some circles in America. Historically, um, it's not valid. I mean, when you when you go to South Africa in the last fifty years, there would be many who would not have that as the reason they believed in slavery in the past. They believed blacks were lesser than because of their biblical belief that, that God somehow cursed Ham and Ham gave rise to the black people. So there's that side as well. And of course then you read a book by the first black bishop in Africa, which is a real insightful one, and he said, well, we traded black people for black people long before the Europeans came along and bought them off us. Mm -hmm. So it cannot that, that they were the black people, of course, were spiritists and uh, they they had a creation basis to their to their thinking, but they were nevertheless spiritists and cannibals. Mm -hmm. So the real reason for slavery is that man has rebelled against God and no longer holds his fellow man as made in the image of God or you know created equally. Mm -hmm. um, so the evolutionist takes advantage of that in his concepts of man, but. Only in, in the USA would you have sort of a mm -hmm. evolutionist mentality okay. that would put one person above another. Right. All right, we have this question from the Fast Blast, John. Uh, what do you think about eugenics? Well, eugenics is a word that's sort of not even known by many people anymore. Charles Darwin's cousin, if I remember correctly, came up with the idea, and that is to uh, um, it help natural selection along. Mm -hmm. so that if you uh, watch that movie Expelled, which is doing the rounds of the theatres at the moment, and I encourage people to go and see it, even though it's not by a creationist group, it's by an intelligent design group, but uh, it was really good to get the um, person who cared for some of the uh, Holocaust death camps in, in um, Germany saying that Hitler's war was really based on evolution and natural selection, Charles Darwin, survival of the fittest and we decide who's the fittest yeah. and so eugenics has traditionally been us playing little G.O.D. because there was no real G.O.D. Mm -hmm. um, so in America of course you had a big, a big um, rush on that back in the early part of the 1900s mm -hmm. where you chose who could have children and who couldn't mm -hmm. and it was all basically a Darwinian mm -hmm. evolutionist mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Sad part of history but it's, it's there. Um, all of us more or less, uh, if we're sensible, don't do stupid things when it comes to breeding, but that's quite a different thing. Um, you might remember God told uh, Moses to tell the people of Israel they were not to marry their close relatives. Mm -hmm. And all you've got to do is to go into some of the, the hills of uh, western Kentucky and you'll see the results of ignoring instructions like that. Um, mm -hmm. It is not mm -hmm. good. So mm -hmm. all of us, if we're sensible, will practice sensible reproductive mm -hmm. methods, but mm -hmm. to go to the next step and play God is a different matter altogether. All right. Uh, John, we have this question. Uh, what is macroevolution, and has it ever been observed? Well, you'll basically, um, again, I'd encourage people to go to creationresearch.net, scroll down the site map, and click on the evidence brochures, because there's four wonderful brochures there they can print out or just read that have lots of these illustrations on. Okay. Um, Macroevolution is not a popular word amongst evolutionists. They, they like to think of evolution as being just change. Yeah. Now, I'm old enough, I um, mean, if you were seeing me live here, you'd see a guy who obviously graduated from university quite a while and has been wandering around the planet hitting rocks and digging up dinosaurs and things like that um, for, for many decades. But I'm old enough to remember when evolutionists used to say evolution was simple to complex. Mm -hmm. And then they discovered, well, you don't actually see that. 
Uh, sometimes you see complex things degenerating, like right. human beings being born without arms or legs or ducks that can no longer fly. Right. So the next level was to call it a change in gene frequency. And then that didn't work because if you had a crowd of 100 white people and you shifted 10 of them out and brought 10 black people in, you changed the gene frequency, but nobody had evolved. So now they just call it change. Hence, they don't like creationists saying, well, macroevolution is where molecules turn into microbes mm -hmm. that turn into men. That's the right. big theory. Right. Uh, you might have heard the joke about hydrogen being a colorless, odorless gas, which right. given long enough turns into school teachers. That's macroevolution. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Microevolution is where you just see, you know, finches with long beaks becoming right. finches with short beaks. Right. Macroevolution, nobody's ever seen it. We've never been able to make it happen. Okay. Uh, by the way, for those of you just tuning in, we are talking on our Newsmaker Line with John Mackay, and uh, we're talking about creation versus evolution, and we invite you to go to his website. His link is right there in the bio section on the Edge's home page. And if you have a question for John, you can uh, click on the Fast Blast to come here to the studio or join there in the live chat going on right now. And if you don't know where the live chat is, there's a, a link on the left side of the website that says Live Chat, and there's a lively conversation that goes on as this broadcast proceeds. Uh, John, question here for you. Uh, where do, and I guess uh, you have a little bit explaining from an evolutionary standpoint, where do they say that matter itself comes from? Well, there's certain questions that are regarded as unfair, and that's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, it's if you say, well, okay, you've got the Big Bang yeah. Theory, now where did the matter come from right. that blew up? Right. And they'll usually avoid that question, mm -hmm. and I love to force it on them, mm -hmm. because when they say, how could you believe in an eternal God who created, you just say, well, what did you believe in, eternal hydrogen? Uh, so it's either eternal mindless matter or an eternal yeah. personal God. They're both in the same category. They are yeah. accepted by faith, but one is blind because right. nobody's seen eternal hydrogen uh, doing anything uh, except, you know, blowing up because it's already here. Right. Um, but when you have a personal God who's come to this earth as a personal man, uh, it mm -hmm. makes a big difference. So mm -hmm. both of them are faith positions, but right. uh, they don't usually like those those right. questions. Yeah, uh, and I and I guess because it's I guess from a creationist standpoint, uh, one would say that God is and always has been, and so therefore, you, you know, you can leave it at that. But uh, if you talk about a Big Bang, then you have the right to ask that person. Well, where did the matter come from to to, to uh, start the Big Bang? And then who triggered it when it did come about, and uh, is the universe still expanding? And on that, John, is is the universe slowly dying, or is it expanding and growing and accelerating? <laughs> well, most astronomers who look out there have reached the conclusion that, yes, the universe seems to be expanding, but in doing so, it's dooming itself. So most of them say, but don't worry about it. It's not going to happen for another 700 billion years or something, right? They put it far away in the future. Yeah, whatever they put in the line, uh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever yeah, they write outside in. Outside their lifetime. Right, right. Um, the biblical position is, uh, in fact, if you go to England where some of the first astronomy observatories were set up that you know in the Western world, yeah. you go to some of the universities and they're carved in the sandstone over the door is the heavens declare the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So those astronomers had a biblical framework of the, of the creation. And mm -hmm. if you say, right. where did they get their ideas of expanding universes right. from? It's very simple, because the psalmist wrote that God stretched out the heavens. Mm -hmm. And the prophet wrote, uh, you know, God said to his mm -hmm. people, you'll never be able to measure the mm -hmm. heavens. And then back in Genesis where it says and God created the heavens and most of us have forgotten where our English word heavens comes from, mm -hmm. it means to heave. Yeah. So that God made a space that wasn't there. Right. And one way in which you could never measure it is it's never the mm -hmm. same size twice. Um, so yes, it would be expanding, but built into that expansion is the fact that it will have an end. Mm -hmm. Things will run out because, you know, the yeah. same amount of energy is getting...